All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and talk about Django template basics. But before we do, I wanna actually adjust how we did this string substitution to make a little bit more sense to how templates actually work. So first and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and just combine these strings into one big one and just call that our HTML string and get rid of those things, right? This I think is fairly straightforward. And then I'm gonna use an older version of string substitution with the format method. So format allows us to use key value pairs. This is one of the ways to use it. So we can actually get rid of the article object itself and just do something along those lines. And also with format, what we can do is use a dictionary. In this case, I'll call it context with those same key value pairs, right? So I can use title and then article object dot title and then ID, article object dot ID. And then of course, content, same thing, right? Just like that. And then with this format call, I can unpack this with those two stars and that will unpack the context into here as formatted objects. So when we save that and we take a look at our project, uh, assuming that it's still running, we can see that it's still working identical, right? And so this actually better sets us up for using Django templates in general. But one of the things that we should also realize is Python itself could be responsible for the file that actually holds this string. So in other words, if we actually used either just the built-in open, let's say for instance, my template.html, um, you know, with the read and we can set this to an F and all that. Uh, and then the text itself, so string being the F.read, you know, we could actually potentially use that same string in that file, much like this, right? So I'm not gonna actually do this because, well, that's not the best way to use Django templates, but the general idea is still there. We are opening up the file, we're sort of reading it, and then we're rendering in that context to whatever string is inside of that file. Now, Django templates are very similar to that, but they take it to a whole nother level. So what I wanna do is of course, get rid of this right here, but I do wanna actually create a file that will hold this data. So to create this file, the question is now, where do we actually put it? Now, a very common thing to do is inside of your project is to make a folder called templates. So this folder would hold all of your Django templates for the most part. Now you could put it inside of apps too, which we'll talk about that later. But for now, just think of it in terms of one folder to hold all of the templates you might end up using. Now in this case, this is just a very simple template for rendering out uh, like an article object. But of course we could add more data to it if we wanted to. So let's go ahead and take a look at just turning this data into a template. So inside of here, I'm gonna go ahead and call this home.html or really home-view.html. And the only reason I'm calling it home-view is because of the name of the function in this case. So now inside of there, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this in and paste it here. Now, one of the cool things that you should notice right off the bat is it is an HTML page. So that means that most, if not all text editors have syntax help for you inside of an HTML page. And even VS Code, as we see down here, it says HTML in the bottom. And that's mostly accurate, right? So it's mostly accurate in the terms that it's just purely HTML. The part that it's not accurate is that it isn't just purely HTML, it's actually a Django template. So that means that we need to add additional data to this template, which we'll get back to. But for now, we actually have a file where that template lives, but Django doesn't know about that folder. It doesn't know about this template's directory, so we need to let Django know. And in fact, it's in a very similar way that we let Django know about our installed app. So we had this configuration option for installed apps and we added articles there. If we scroll down a bit, we see that there is a templates configuration and a key called DIRS, as in directories. So we can actually add those directories in here. Granted, there are a few other options inside of this that we won't need to discuss just yet, but the idea here is we need to update Django knowing about this templates directory. So before we go down the rabbit hole of how to do this correctly, let's do it incorrectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the path so you can right click or control click on that, copy that path, and then put it into a string right here. 
So of course, that is the path to the directory on my machine. And if you did it on your machine, it's gonna be the directory on your machine. So now Django knows where some templates list or live. Notice that it is in a list, so that means that we could have multiple places for these templates, which is also really cool. And Django is going to check them in the order that you place them here, right? So if you put it like this, and then maybe another one, say like try Django 1.11 or something like that, right? You would totally have the ability to do it this way. It's just gonna go, this is gonna where it's gonna check first. This is where I'll check second. I'll explain that once we actually do a template check. Uh, so as of now, we have one location for our templates. Okay, so back into our views, we now need to use that template. Now you might be tempted to use that open method like I showed you before, but that is actually not the way we wanna do it. Instead, we wanna use Django's built-in method to do this. And so what to do the actual built-in method, what we want is we wanna use a shortcut to take our context and our template name and turn that into a string. It's not surprising, the shortcut name is called render to string. So we're gonna go ahead and do from Django.template.loader. We're gonna import render to string. So this is a shortcut method that will allow us to do essentially all of this with one caveat is using the template itself. So now what I'm gonna do is just say HTML string equals to render to string. And now we'll go ahead and pass in that template name, just home-view.html, you know, right? So that's the name, there we go. And in here, I can also pass in the context dictionary. So context equaling to the context variable that I set here, right? And so now I'm gonna go ahead and comment this one out, just like that, and we'll take a look at this, okay? So let's make sure everything's saved up and let's make sure our server's running and I'll come back in and wait a minute, it's not actually rendering the content. Now it is rendering something, right? So it actually is showing me valid HTML, but it's not actually doing the replacement that it should. It's not doing that string substitution like I sort of expected from here. And this is where it is 100% a Django template and not a standard HTML page. And that is how all of our context variables in here or all of these variables, how they actually get rendered. So if you don't do it correctly, they get rendered all like this. So let's do it correctly. The easiest way to do that is by using double curly brackets like that on the front and back. And so we can do that by just like this. And actually if you double click on one of the variables and hit shift and the curly bracket, it will come in just like that. And so now that I save it, I come back and I refresh and now it's actually working. So that's the key here with the templates themselves. So inside of Django, when you want to use templates, um, you actually have to use these double curly brackets. And it's very often that you'll see a space between the variable name and so on. So this is nice. I, I really like the fact that I can actually render out data in this way. And as we see, it's a very simple and easy way to do it. Now I will mention one other way because it's nice to know that there are other ways to do this and it's called get template. So you don't have to remember this one at all. I think render to string is something you'll use more often, but you can actually get the template with get template and call it home-view.html. And then you can do, you know, template string being that, or rather the actual template variable itself, and then dot render, and then the context you wanna use. So the render to string actually does the same thing, but just in one step. So you can test that out as you'd like. Um, this is useful from time to time, uh, especially if you need to render multiple different contexts for this same template. So that would be kind of where you would use that one. Uh, and it's definitely worth knowing about, but it's probably something you won't use very often. In fact, you'll probably use render string the most, if not another shortcut that we'll talk about some other time. Uh, but I'll go ahead and get rid of those right now because we don't need it. Okay, so we're gonna leave in render to string. Now there is one other major aspect to templates that I think are great. Sure, we can add in context and we can pass in 
any sort of item in here, including the object itself. So even a Python object that we could use the you know object.title instead of the context variable.title, which I think is actually pretty cool. So it's giving us the same value, uh, but it actually can simplify the context we actually pass in here. But no, that's actually not what I wanted to really get into. We will talk about templates a lot more going forward, but there is one other huge advantage to using templates, and that is something called template inheritance. So in other words, what I can do is I can use curly brackets, percent sign, open and close it, and then we can do something called extends base.html. And then around this content, I'm gonna do a replaceable block called block content, and then we will put in block content right here. Okay, so right now we are now really going down into the depths of what Django templates could potentially do. Of course, if I save this and I refresh in here, I get this template does not exist error. Do you remember how I said it's going to check your system for templates? And we can actually see this. Now, when I say check your system, I mean in settings.py, it's gonna check all of the directories that you set right here. And so we can actually see that right here is it's using the template loader system. First, it's using the file system, which is this path right here. Notice that there is no base.html. And then it's actually looking inside of different app folders that actually have a templates directory themselves. And so if we go back into our directories here, I could totally add another directory that may have our other templates. And we can save that refresh in here and notice that it's it's also looking in there as well. Now we will certainly make this base.html to make this template work in just a moment, but now is the time to actually update how our templates directory works. And it should be using base dir slash templates and then doing a comma, right? That way it's not actually directly related to my own system, but rather it's directly related to Django itself. And this base directory, we can verify what that is by literally printing it out. So if I do print and base dir, we can see it actually show up right here. So let's just actually put a string in front of that just to denote it. And we see that there is our base directory. And of course, yours will be different. And I think the key thing here is the fact that it actually contains the path, this whole thing right here, as we did when we put it in manually. Okay, so this right here is how you use pathlib. That's how you would add another template in here or another directory in here. So we could totally just get rid of both of those and just refresh. And now we still have that problem of the template not existing. So this is actually a really easy fix and the way to fix it is by coming into our templates and actually creating that template, which in this case, it's just base.html. And what we can do with VS Code is we can use the less than sign and explanation mark and then doc type hit enter. And it'll actually help us create the HTML itself, All right? So hopefully you're already familiar with creating HTML. And if you're not, that's a very H simple HTML document at this point. And so if I save this, what I'll see is just an empty you know, page here and looking at the source too, it's just an empty page with what we just put in. And so what we wanna do is actually update this so that my original template could actually work. And we use that with this block right here. So block content and end block content. And so this is going to now be substituted with this item right here. So if I refresh in here in the source or in the actual content itself, it is now showing up with more valid HTML. Of course, there's still stuff we should do to improve this HTML, but to keep things nice and simple or as simple as they can be, I wanted to show you it this way. Now, the reason I went backwards instead of starting with base.html is to really just talk about how it's working. So base.html itself is gonna be the parent template, the template that we sort of insert data into. And to insert that data, we use this block content or these blocks here with the curly brackets, the percent sign on both sides. And in some cases you won't see the in block with the variable name of content. 
And certainly this is a variable name. So we can absolutely use something like ABC here instead of content. But it's very common that you use ABC uh, or rather it's very common that you use content instead of anything else. Um, and so that is the basics of templates. Now I realize I went through a lot of things here that might be a little confusing. So let me just recap it and we will absolutely come back to templates. So even if we lost you here, don't worry, we will definitely come back to it and we'll go into more depth. Now the recap is number one, we need to create a template of some kind, even if it's just a few lines of HTML. Number two, we need to import the render to string method from the template loader. And then number three, we actually pass in the context that we want that template to render. And that's it, right? It does that string substitution for us. And it's a little bit more advanced of string substitution because we can actually use objects inside of the template itself. And of course those curly brackets are really important. Now, if we want this template to use other attributes of another template, that's when we use the extends and the blocks. So extends will grab the attributes of another template, literally all of them, and bring them in, except for where we use the block content. So in other words, I can say h1 hello world here, and then I can do h3 and say, you know, this will be replaced. Save it and we refresh and we see that it says this will be replaced. And so save it and save it and there it goes. So it's now actually replacing that original data from base.html. So hopefully that summarizes things well. Again, we will be using templates a lot. Django really excels at doing models, views, and templates. Those It's a model view template system. So MVT. That's why this one's a bit longer and covers quite a bit more, but it still goes down back to that fundamental thing of using just Python to do some string substitution sprinkled on with some more advanced features so we can actually not repeat ourselves over and over again and just really make our system quite a bit more robust. <laughs>